Hi, welcome to my latest diorama. It's, uh, oh, hold on. I want to be, um, one, one sec. Okay, yeah, so here. No, that's, that's not it either. Uh, must be another story. One second. Wait, did I go down the floor? Hold on, hold on. Ah, I really like the, the ivy here, that's pretty cool. Well, hold on. Okay, looking for the big, cool gate. Okay, okay, here we go. Hi, hi, whoa. We made it. Why do I keep making these things so big? Welcome to Breath of Life Development. My name is Josh Foreman. Today, carved ruins. These are distinct from, you know, ruins that were built up from blocks and then those fell down. This is like where a cliff face was carved in. The most famous one of those is Petra, but there are quite a few like that. And I just really wanted to see if I could tackle that. So I was using a lot of techniques that I've been developing over the past year or so. You can check those out in uh, my previous videos. I've got a bunch of stuff about that. And um, if you wanna see the full length, like get into all the gory details of it, go to my Patreon for as little as $3 a month. You can uh, have access to a bunch of longer videos or teaching oriented. You know, you get to see all the mistakes and that kind of stuff. But this video is just sort of the high level summary, just for entertainment purposes. And I write books, you know, I should just say that more often. I write books, you should check them out. They're fantasy. I have a co-author. They're amazing, they're fun, adventure romps. And as we, as we exit towards the process part of the video, why don't you hit the like and subscribe button? I would I'd really appreciate that. I work really hard on these things, you know, like hundreds of hours. It's, it's, worth, a, it's worth a subscribe button, right? Right? You can see on the right here, that's the giant room that this slightly smaller piece is going into the back of with the Colossus living there. It's just a matter of blocking things in, trying to figure out how the curves are gonna be shaped, cut out all my different layers, looking at the reference from the, the shots I took in the game. Now for the elements that are repeating, things like pillars and stuff, uh, it makes the most sense to make one version and then mold that and cast it. So that's what I'm doing here, starting with the PVC pipe, using some lids of things, uh, freeform air, epoxy sculpt, all these things. Uh, you should check out my tutorials on them if you're interested in more. Googly eyes make really good round elements, as well as these. I have no idea what these are for in real life, but they make nice round elements. For this pillar, I sculpted one third, made kind of a throwaway mold, and then used that to press the other two thirds into place. This is a cup I got from Goodwill, and it's awesome. Like, the shape is perfect for the in-game reference. I was making these pillars in three parts because the three different layers all have different heights of pillars, so I could mix and match the pieces to get what I wanted that way. I covered this with epoxy clay to do all the texture and sculpting cracks. And as usual, I'm doing lots of sanding and carving afterwards. Googly eye. All right, starting to work on the rock pillars on the side, since this is supposed to be carved from these rocks, it was pretty important to get them established to make sure everything played together nicely. I used a variety of molds from things like fondant molds or ones that I made out of the bottom of cups or coasters. And making some quick molds for these elements here. using Mold Max 30. There you go. 
go, it worked out pretty well. I'm using a variety of resins and stuff uh, to cast these. And whatever leftover resin I have, I throw in these fondant molds. You'll see they come in handy later. Here is my beautiful veiny pink cylinder. And out pops a even more beautiful pillar. make a dummy plug like this so that it doesn't have to be completely filled with the resin. That's just a waste of material. Yeah, turned out pretty nice. A little bit of flashing that needs to be removed, but that's no biggie. Another fondant mold that I thought would make a good sort of carved stone decoration. Now for this section that goes along the front of these shelf-like protuberances, I thought it'd be good to make one chunk cast that and do the same thing like I did with the pillars. Use a variety of techniques using some stir sticks, beads, you know, whatever's laying around that seems like it'll work for the project at hand. And we're going to mold this up. Before we check out this mold, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, it's come to my attention that I, I may have made a few very minor teensy tiny mistakes in my past, but that is all behind us now because right now I have one thing to reiterate. This is a mistake that I have never made. This was not a mistake when I recommended it before and that is collectible coins. That's right, Tales from Talifar, the Scarred King collectible coins. Last time I recommended silver. Silver is great, silver is wonderful, well, however, Let's say you have a problem with the Illuminati, with some kind of agendas that are coming at you. That's what these coins are for. That's what these gold coins are for. That's right. There's a limited 50 edition. 50 of these coins have ever been made. If you want to get in on the ground floor right now, own a Tales from Talifar, the Scarred King, book one, collectible, memorable coin, signed right here on the base by the authors, Josh Foreman and Rose Foreman. Right there, is there a better way to store away value, a legacy for you and your loved ones than gold coins? I think not, I think not, friends. These are available on our Etsy shop. There will be a link in the doobly-doo, check it out. Don't make any of the minor mistakes that I've made in my past. Instead, make a good decision, invest in gold today. And, and by gold, I mean, uh, I mean, technically these are gold plated, uh, mi microscopically thin plating. But, but it is real gold, real 100% genuine gold. If you can't take my word for it, whose word can you take? Not that of the, of the West Coast liberal elites. They're not gonna tell you what's right. They're not gonna tell you what's good. What about the ivory tower intellectuals up there on high preaching down on us, crapping on us little people, telling us what we should and shouldn't invest our money in. That's right, gold is the answer. Not, not what they say, not education, not science. It's, it's nonsense. What we need, is more gold coins. This is actually a pretty good book. This, this part always makes me cry. <laughs> gold coins! <clears throat> gold coins, get them, get them today. At, uh, at Fancy Shop, link below. Sorry about that, everyone. We'll try to get a better sponsor next time. Okay, mold rubber is set. Set, it is very set. Problem solved. Thank you, comically oversized scissors. Designing the backdrop here, this is kind of the focal point of the piece, so I was holding off on doing it until I had a better idea of what the rest of it would be like. And uh, yeah, but now it's time to tackle it.
I'm getting more use out of that mold I made for the pillars to go on the front of this arch part too. As you can see, this mold eventually wore out. I used Freeform Air, which is fantastic to press into these molds. It leaves these nice sort of eroded edges to them and fits in perfectly with the resin cast that I made as well. And here I was playing around with the composition to figure out what kind of pattern would look coolest on this back uh, door thing. Used some window sealant as well. Here's some of the fondant uh, casts that I made. Little dollar store gem things. Dollar store is full of great things for dioramas. And I needed more rock texture on those edge bits, so I just plastered some freeform air over it, sanded it down. Using foam board to lay out the basic background for the top part. And trying to repurpose as many patterns that I've already used in the rest of the piece up here to keep things as consistent as possible. And like I said at the beginning, these are carved ruins and the thing that makes them distinct is seeing the joint lines of the rock travel through all the, the patterns and stuff. You see the crack go through the entire thing. It's not like masonry where one block will be cracked and then one next to it will be not cracked. You know, if, if there's a crack, it travels most of the way through most of the rock. And this top part is these thinner pillars. I'm using some gasket things to help define the shape there. Uh, more dollar store something, some kind of bead things. This is a silicone kitchen, you know, you put your hot things on it type of thing, but man, perfect hexes, huh? I'm sort of grouting them with freeform air. Also using freeform air to sculpt in some better flow to these so it doesn't look so much like rubber gaskets on a tube. Working more on those flow lines where the rock joints are starting to show. And always good to sanity check, see what the heights are, starting to get the proportions figured out, adding some decorative elements to the backsplash. And I'm using a hot wire thing, cutter thingy thing for the stairs, as well as a soldering iron. I had to go in and cut some chunks out to make the shelves fit right. And then I was figuring out how I wanted the arch to go. Made sure it had to follow the general flow of the rocks. Had some pretty substantial gaps here to fill. So I used freeform air and, you know, other chunks of material. Now on the first side, I, I was fairly happy with the rocks, but not totally happy. So I just continued iterating on it, looking at more and more reference, trying to get the look that I was going for. And um, I liked how the first column was at the top more than at the bottom. So I tried to transition it from that, the bottom sort of more um, layered look to a more chunky look at the top. And using a variety of techniques, uh, like I said at the beginning, you should check out my tutorial on making mountains out of XPS foam if you want to see more detail on that. Beautiful coaster art goes here. This is the underside of those shelves, which you only see if the camera is actually looking from behind the, <laughs> the whole thing. Um, so I don't know if it'll ever be seen. Okay, doing my best to continue the flow lines through every element of the piece. Sometimes this gets tricky when you have to go from XPS foam to resin or freeform air, because the, the it just everything cuts a little bit differently. More sign cutting, distressing. Always looking at reference to see what kind of distress the actual ruins have. 
And I wanted some of these pillars to have more substantial chunks fallen out of them, which was uh, kind of challenging, you know, because they're hollow. And so I had to go in and backfill them. For the places where the rocks would fall down from above, I thought a percussive force from a hammer would kind of give the most convincing breakage. And starting with the final paint, I had about four colors with one sort of taupe medium in between. And then I mixed in, you know, a brown, a red, a yellow, green, I guess a blue one too, a little bit. Um, yeah, and just tried to mix that around to give a good variety of color in there. You'll see after I put the wash on, all of those colors are fade back quite a bit. And finally, figuring out the frame that goes around the whole thing. This is gonna be important to how it integrates into the larger diorama. Not really happy with how symmetrical <laughs> this damage is, so I had to go in and make a few more adjustments. So I figure I might as well follow the joint line I had already established. Uh, but with XPS foam, it's really not that difficult to do this sort of thing. It's a great medium. All right, now I was planning out where these chunks would fall. You know, thinking through the scenarios. Okay, this thing has collapsed, it falls down here, it broke the stairs there, you know, that sort of thing. Used a variety of basing things. Uh, I don't even know what most of them are. I just put them in jars according to their size and color. Using PVA glue to put them down and then spray isopropyl alcohol over that to thin it out. Now I'm going in with my wash. It is black ink and um, flow aid, a couple other things. Check out Black Magic Crafts video on black wash. It's more or less that. One of the con convenient things about having a removable back piece here is that it lets me access all the angles, not just for the camera. All right, now I wanted to figure out the green verdant part um, and tried a bunch of experiments on existing pieces that I had. Also looking at the final drips and stains. Uh, when I look at my reference, it always pushes me to be more aggressive with those stripes and lines than I naturally would be. This particular one here, inspired by this reference right there. I keep having to look at the reference to remind myself it's okay to be that bold with the colors. And there you have it. Isn't it amazing how much better a diorama looks in sunlight than in studio lights? So there you have it. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. I. I think a lot of things came together pretty well. Um, you know, there's always little nitpicks I could make. Next time I'll do things a little bit better. Thank you as always to my patrons. Thank you also to those of you who hang out on Twitch with me, especially Fizmatics, Indivies, uh, Ding Dong Diddly, he's a pal, Turtlebite. There's been a few uh, fun, newer people who've been hanging around and they're really fun to talk to and just wanted to give you guys a shout out. Thank you so much for that. And also for being on my Discord and saying hi on the Discord, sharing really cool content there. We have a lot of uh, very positive community vibes there. If you wanna share your art or just wanna see other people's art, uh, go check it out, link in the description. And you know, coming soon in Josh years, uh, soon we're gonna see the full context where this diorama is going to live inside an even larger diorama. So look forward to that and we'll see you next time.